haven't had a customer in a fucking week. All work and no pay makes Roger a dull boy. All work and no pay makes Roger a dull boy. Oh, <laughs> uh, hello, internet fans. And welcome to 3B Video. I'm your host, Rotten Roger DeMarco. And today, we're gonna be talking about Craig Singer's 2006 film, Dark Ride. Mm-hmm, this one is awesome. So here is your plot synopsis. A group of six friends are road tripping and they break into this amusement park attraction. Unknowingly, an escaped mental patient is also inhabiting that amusement park attraction, picking them off one by one. That's pretty much all there is to it. There's not a lot under the hood in this movie, but it's still pretty fucking rad. But before we get into my overall thoughts of the film, first, let's take a look at Ryan Rogers! Splatter facts. We have 10 dead bodies. We have two titties. Van ride montage. One creepy old gas station employee. Meat slapping. Not that kind of meat slapping. Get your mind out of the gutter. Obligatory crazy hitchhiker. Gratuitous drug use. One baby masked killer. And security guard number padding. The methods of death include but are not limited to gutted, off screen, punched through, night killer style, chewed on, puppeted, severed head, head severed, got his head cut off, head split, splonked on spikes, and knifed. You gotta keep it simple for good measure. Okay, so now on to my overall thoughts of this film. First of all, this is part of the original lineup for the eight films to die for. When these hit theaters, they did limited theater runs where they played all eight films back to back and you bought one ticket and you got to go. I was one of the people who went and sat through eight films in the theater with one of my friends and it was fucking amazing. So I got to see this in the theater. Some of those films were really good, some of those films were really bad. And this is towards the top of the heap in that original eight film lineup. I think they've done two more eight films to die for sets and those are the same. They kind of range in quality, but to my knowledge, the first run was the only run that hit theaters. And one thing about this movie that makes it stand out among the other seven in the series is that this one has a higher production value look to it, if that makes any sense. The other films sort of have this very cheap vibe to them, and this film seems like it's on a much bigger scale because you have this amusement park that looks like a million bucks. This ride is filled top to bottom with all of these gory props and all of these awesome animatronics and all this fun stuff, and the lighting and the sound and all of that add to what makes it look like it costs more money than it probably did. This is a pretty decent, straightforward slasher film that in my opinion is perfect for the holiday season. It doesn't necessarily take place on or around Halloween, but the haunted ride amusement park attraction obviously lends a hand in making it feel very October forward or making it feel like it belongs in this month's lineup of films. Because just using that ride, it gives this movie such a fun, realistic Halloween atmosphere. There's something nostalgic about it. There's something that as soon as you see it, it reminds you of the Halloween season. And this movie nails that. 100% on atmosphere alone. Not to mention that the lead girl, Kathy, is played by Jamie Lynn Sigler, who was Willow on Sopranos. So if you're a Sopranos fan, you have her, and that immediately elevates this movie. And another face that you might recognize, Patrick Renna, who plays Bill. He's the heavyset kid from Sandlot. So as soon as you see him, you go, ah, 
fucking sandlot. So that's awesome. The cast, that's one thing that's fantastic about this movie that separates it from the pack. Very recognizable faces. The cast is above average and they take this very average slasher script. And even if the dialogue feels very cookie cutter and very run of the mill, the cast takes that dialogue and elevates it, which is, is kind of weird when you, you know, I mean, how many times can you say like, oh my God, they're killing us, let's run. Depending on who you put in that role saying it, it can have depth and it can have range and it can have weight. And this movie actually does that. And that's fantastic to take this very standard plot for a horror film and make it something that you'll remember. I also love the fact that Bill, the Sandlot Kid, in this movie, he's sort of our resident Randy Meeks now. He is a total film geek who is constantly referencing films and all of his friends have no fucking clue what he's talking about. And certainly, being a horror fan and all of you who are horror fans and you're in a uh, social situation and you start quoting horror movies or saying, ah, that reminds me of Bella Lugosi or whatever, and everybody around you looks at you like you're a fucking alien. He's an alien. Because you're not speaking their typical jargon. Yeah, it's warm today. You're talking about something that is important to you. And I love that about that character. I have to say though, that I love everything about that whole carnival. It totally reminds me of Toby Hooper's Fun House. And maybe that's why I gravitate towards this movie is that it has that feel. If you're a fan of Fun House, I think you would be a fan of Dark Ride. It's essentially the same thing, really. Just a couple of decades apart. Dark Ride is not as good as Fun House, but it is worthy of being put in the same category as Fun House. Another very awesome positive about this film is that it probably has some of the best gore that I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen shit that'll turn you white. I have seen some stuff. The effects in this movie are fantastic. There's one of the best decapitations. There's one of the best uh, lengthwise head splits I've ever seen on film. In camera, practical, fucking gorgeous work. But in my personal opinion, this movie is 100% popcorn as fuck. Because it's just fun. It's cheesy. It's got great gore. It's got a little bit of nudity for you. This movie is as slasher as slasher gets. It's very straightforward. Killer, stalking, chopping, final girl, final people, showdown, security guards for padding. You've seen it all before, but you haven't seen it, if you know what I'm saying. This movie deserves to be seen because it's better than most of the stuff that was coming out around that time. It holds a place in horror history. It is a part of this original eight films to die for. I feel like not seeing these, you're doing yourself a total disservice because when this first eight came out, they were trying to capitalize and capture that, not grindhouse necessarily, not that grindhouse feel, but that theater experience. It was meant to be experienced with a large group of people. You're laughing, you're eating popcorn, you're drinking soda, you're having a good time. And it translates well to home video. You take it home, you get a bunch of people around, you get some pizza, candy, popcorn, a couple of cases of soda or beer or whatever, whatever you want to keep cold, Tommy. And you sit and watch this movie and experience it with everyone. You're going to laugh. You're going to be like, God damn, look at the nipples on that. Look at the gore on that. You know, it's, it's just fun and it deserves to be seen. So if I have swayed you, click the link in the description and get a copy of Dark Ride today. But uh, I suppose I should probably get going because after all, there's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's gotta watch them. So why not me, right? She worries too much. I'm fine. Just a little tired. She worries too much. I'm fine. Just a little tired. She worries too much. I'm fine. Just a little tired. <laughs>